Hi, hello. So this video is going to be uh, to explain what is a view component and how you can create your own and use it in your application or libraries. So a view component is an element you can find in the view designer on the left in the palette and you can drag and drop inside the canvas. So you, uh, you have already some BMC out of the box view component like a container or record editor for example but you can code your own and that will be available here for example as sample library components that you can exactly like you can use BMC out of the box component you can just drag and drop your own inside the canvas so you won't really see the difference between one from BMC and yours so how is it working? so this is a JavaScript view component so when you create your project uh, here it's a sample library that is available on GitHub. The link should be in the in the description of the video. Uh, you can see that we have a folder under bundle source main web app where you can find your scripts. And inside your scripts you have a view components folder where by convention we are going to put our view components. So in our case we are going to go through the simple label example. So what does it do? So it's very simple. So here, here is a view component. What I'm going to type something in this record editor. You can see that when I'm typing a text, my view component displays the same text. So how is it working? Here you can see in the canvas I got my record editor with a text field and on the right I got my uh, custom view component that I can find here, custom label. This custom label takes one input parameter, label. And right now it's tied to description field from my record editor. So how is it working in code? So if I'm looking inside WebStorm, but you can use whatever, uh, you can use Sublime, you can use uh, another JavaScript editor or just a file editor, I mean, doesn't matter. I'm just using WebStorm. So if we are looking in custom label, you can see that we have a series of files. And I will go through this series of files because you will find the same, uh, pretty much the same structure for every view component. So the first one is a module. The module is where you define the name of your view component. So by definition, uh, by convention to avoid collision with other developers, we strongly advise you to use your bundle name. So if you go through the tutorial from Dave Salsa on docs.bmc.com, you know what is your bundle. Your bundle is pretty much like in Java, your developer ID. So in this example, it's com.example. Sample library is the name of your application. View components, well, it's because we are coding a view component. And custom label is the name of your uh, view component. So here you just describe your view component and its dependencies. So right now it just has one dependency, it's very simple. Once you declare your view component, once you code it, you need to declare it to your all system. So for that, you need to declare it inside the file bxmodule.js. So here you can see somewhere that there is com example sample library custom label. You can also do it in xmodule.js, same way, custom label here. So this is the first step to declare your view component inside the system. So when we are going to load your application here, sample library, we are going to load your view component so they will be available in the palette and later at runtime. So the first file is a module. The second one is a config.js. So it's using the same name as your view component. And the structure is always the same, don't really matter this one. So the name is the name that will appear in the palette, so custom label. The group sample library components is a group under it will be 
in the palette. The type and the design type, we are going to talk about it later, but by convention, just take uh, the name of your application and the name of your view component and just replace the dot by dash. That will be the name of the directives and the design directive. So if you're familiar with AngularJS, you will know what is a directive and uh, it's basically we will we will uh, declare our code. That's why we will declare our code and the way it will be displayed at runtime and at design time. But we'll talk about it later. The bundle ID is the uh, ID that define your application. So it's your developer ID and your application ID. Properties by name is where it's very interesting. It's a list of the parameters, input and output parameters. In this, in this example, we have only one input parameter, label, that will as allow the description. So we have one input, label, its type is string. Is config means it's an input parameter. If we wanted to have an output parameter to, for example, send back a data, this property would be true, set to true. Is required is false, so we don't make it as required. If it was required, we would see here required in red, pretty much like that. And enable expression evaluation is set to true. So this one means that the description here, the description field, the content of the description field here will be evaluated and sent to the view component. That's all why, for example, when I type a text, I am not sending the ID of the description, but I'm sending its value. So here in config.js, we declared the properties. Then the next step is a design directive. So for the design directive, you see it's very simple. Uh, the code will be pretty much the same for 99% of your viewer components. It's uh, just the same module name. The directive here, if you look at it, the, you can find it in the config.js. It's this one, just with camel case. So here, dash, you replace dash at the next letter by a capital letter. The name needs to be exactly the same. This is very important. So, and this directive only loads a template URL. And this template URL here is just a sentence, like a, a custom label will be here. So what is a design directive and design directive of HTML? Those are the directives that will be displayed during design time in your view designer. So you can see here that it's very simple. I display just a custom label will be here. We are going to see in another example, we can do something way more elaborate than that. But right now we want to be very, it's very basic. So this is for the design directive. So the same way we have a directive GS and directive HTML. Those ones are the ones that are going to be used during runtime. So here in the HTML, we can see it's pretty easy. We are going just to display a label applying a filter, an Angular GS filter, this one. So the filter, I will go very fast about it. It's just a standard Angular GS filter declared here, that will just send back a value. Label parameter value is label text. So here we just take the label and we apply the AngularJS filter. So as you can see, the directive here is very simple. It, pretty much, it looks pretty much like the design directive. It's pretty rare. Here it's because we just apply a filter, so we don't need to really do anything about it. So the interesting part is also here you will find the directive that you can find in type. So the same way, it's camel case. And the thing that is very interesting for you is Rx configuration. Rx configuration is uh, the object that will be sent by Innovation Suite to your view component. And it contains pretty much everything. And one of the elements it contains and also the are the input parameters. So inside the scope, we are going to give you Rx configuration. And as you can see in your HTML, we have Rx configuration dot properties by name dot label. 
properties by name is going to contain the input parameters from your view component. So here, if you remember in the label config.js, we had one input parameter set as label. So here in the HTML, I'm getting the value sent to the view component. So the input parameter, and I'm applying this filter. So that's all when I type a text. I'm just sending this value to the input parameter label here. And well, that's how it's working.